Hello and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about .NET Framework 4.8 to .NET 6 migration. So let's jump right in. Make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project. Do you want to earn $100,000 a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just 3 months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. Alright, we have to understand what are these three different words. Let's start with the official picture from Microsoft. .NET Framework 4.8 describes the old .NET that runs only under Windows. So it is not class platform here capable. So .NET 6, the modern .NET that is cross platform capable. It is the successor of .NET Core 3.1 and .NET 5.0. It is the future of .NET and the default for new projects. .NET standard is a specific that describes the API surface of a .NET implementation. It is a subset of the .NET framework and .NET. It is used to create libraries that can be used by both .NET framework and .NET. It is not a runtime, it is just a specification. So the last part sounds odd, but imagine .NET standard like an interface or multiple thousand interfaces and classes that a client has to implement the client would be .NET Framework or .NET. Obviously, it is not like that, but from an oversimplified mental model, you can think of it like that. Why is this important? Well, there is a thing called .NET Standard 2.0 and the beauty is that .NET Framework 4.8 and .NET 6 implement that. That means if you have a library that is .NET Standard 2.0, you can use this library in both .NET Framework 4.8 and .NET 6. And that is the key to migration, at least in this scenario. Microsoft officials supports .NET Standard 2.0, but they will not create new standards. So you should not rely on them anymore and migrate sooner or later to .NET 6 or later. Before we can start the migration itself, we have to do some groundwork and this is independent of the next test but big benefit. You gain already some benefit from it. Migrate to the SDK style CSProj format. If you forget how the old CSProj format looks like, here's the reminder. And this example is almost the smallest you can get. Look at the modern SDK style and this is reasonable big project file on top. In the old world, you also have packages.config file that contains all the AnuGet packages. It seems cumbersome to migrate project, but it is not really. There are plenty of good tools doing the heavy lifting for you. The main tool I use is the Upgrade Assistant from Microsoft. The tool can migrate your projects to the new format and also look for AnuGet packages that are in camp compatible yes that's it is something you also have to do sooner or later migrate your anigad packages for the sole migration of the project format it is not necessary but for the migration process as a whole it is basically where i went through all projects and checked whether or not anigad packages is compatible with the dotnet standard 2.0 if so you don't have to do anything again we want to do step by step you can move to a new major version of the replace it after your migration is done it is really important to stay on track by the way, Upgrade Assistant can also help you get, get rid of the reference include tags as they are also not supported anymore. More often than not, they can be replaced by any get package from Microsoft. If you are only interested in migrating your project files without anything else, there is also a tool called CSPROS to VS2017 that can do the job for you at least some extent. For example, we had some pre and post build tasks, unfortunately it didn't work out from the get go and I had to migrate them by hand afterwards, but hey, still tons of time saved. Independent of tools you are using, make a concrete plan first. Don't just rush into a migration or you will get lost. 
in our case we could start with very easy we had some console applications that had literally no references to any library if so you have to start with next step i will describe afterwards it was plain simple to replace so here's the example and we were done yes the compiler might complain but issues were easy to fix if you have a console application that references libraries you have to do the next step first all right migrate library project to dotnet standard 2.0 here we can use the power of dotnet standard 2.0 when we migrate to a library to dotnet standard 2.0 we can use it in both dotnet framework 4.8 and dotnet 6 as with the console application described above you can set the target framework to dotnet standard 2.0 now there can be things that will not work in our case the biggest issue was http context.current at HTTP context.current was used in library project and that thing doesn't exist anymore in the modern .NET world which is good but for migration that goes step by step we need that thing for the time being we can make an easy transition for that the library project aka .NET standard 2.0 was already using dependency injection so we can leverage that instead of HTTP context.current we now inject the IHTTP context accessor that is default in the modern world but wait someone has to register that thing what I did this is in my ASP.NET web API project I created an implementation and registered into the artifact container a consuming service now only gets the IHTTP context accessor injected and can use it like this you can do this step by step until all of your library projects are migrated okay now ASP.NET web API migrate to ASP.NET core 6 this is the biggest part of the migration well at least at some extent I would suggest create a new project from scratch and add files to ha you had before some things like global.asax doesn't exist anymore and you have to migrate them manually global.asax uh, has some entry points like begin request application start and so on application start is now in your program.cs where you can configure the application begin request and end request are now middlewares so here's example of such a middleware basically all of those events are mappable to the new dotnet 6 world another thing you will discover is that the web api config doesn't exist anymore either this is now your startup.cs or in the newest template also a part of your program.cs another change we had to make while migrating is to signal our package they are not compatible between dotnet framework 4.8 and dotnet 6 this has also had direct impact on our front end as we had to switch here as well migrate to dotnet 6 once all our projects are either on dotnet standard 2.0 or dotnet 6 it is time to migrate the dotnet standard 2.0 once to dotnet 6 as i said earlier dotnet standard 2.0 shouldn't be used anymore and dotnet 6 has a richer api so all of your apis should be migrated to dotnet 6 but but this is a very easy step just change the target framework to dotnet 6 0 and you are done it should also compile because as they are compatible now that your migration is completely done and well tested you can think of all new things you can do so don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates to joining our course you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com thank you